to me one day and she said, I'm proud of you. You know that you are limitless. I felt that, Crystal. I felt that. Hi, welcome back everybody. So today, sorry. <laughs> so today is gonna be a little bit emotional. So I was watching, uh, of course, Crystal from Bag Day Crochet. She released her video about how did she learn how to crochet. And as you saw in the intro, I mean, I'm still crying. <laughs> I wanted to take this opportunity to take advantage of thinking about it, going back on, on, on down memory lane and giving you all a little story about how I began or how I learned how to crochet. Get a little teary-eyed or emotional, please. It's okay, it's normal. I'm an emotional man. I don't hide my feelings. I think it's nice and it makes people human when you see them empathetic or, you know, um, just uh, human. <laughs> You know what I mean? Start with how I even got into the yarn world. So my grandma, where my grandma would stay at would be the, what you would call the family home of everyone in my, uh, not just immediate family, but you know, my first cousins and stuff like that. So my mom's sisters and brothers, their kids were very, very close. And all of us were raised, we didn't get uh outside babysitters what we did is we had a house i had some aunts who didn't have any kids or anything but we were their kids they raised us uh my grandma would be she had her own floor we would be in the third floor and she would be on the second floor and the living room was her space that was you know she had her chair she had her couch she was a very active mature woman very smart and it, i just remember as a kid she would just she could just spend hours just sitting there doing this thing with her hands and yarn and after a while, you know, like as kids, you see it, but you don't pay attention to it. But then you'd realize a week later, like, oh my God, she, she just made this. Like she would have something or she would start something else. And I would ask, well, what was the thing that you made? And she would show me. And also, I just love soft things. Uh, you could say, I guess, I'm a little, you know, they say everyone's on the spectrum a little bit, everyone has a little bit of autism in there. Uh, I think for me, it comes with texture and softness. I never wore, fun fact, I never wore a pair of jeans until I was at least 15 years old because jean material was so dry and rough on my skin and I couldn't stand that. And it wasn't until like, brands like American Eagle and stuff like that came out with soft jeans. So, which is what you would consider now to be a comfortable jean. So yeah, I would always be there. I'd squish her yarn and sometimes I'd just sit there. I mean, she'd watch TV and stuff like that or I would just fall asleep next in the couch or just whatever. But I, I she was always on the back of my mind. And one day I, I have distinctly remember that she, it was the beginning of the school year or right before school was about to start. So this was like in midsummer, so she could prep. She asked me and my brother when we went over, go into my closet and pick your favorite color or whatever color appeals to you. So she could make us a, a sweater for school when it would get cold. I remember her closet. It, she didn't have much. She did have, I mean, it was all heart, red heart super saver or yarns from Mexico, the really thin fingering weights, because she would make tablecloths and table mats and stuff like that. I remember picking this beautiful forest green color. So when I picked it, she, she was like, okay, cool. And I didn't hear anything about that for another two months. And it wasn't before the school year started that, you know, she comes, she, the next time we go over, she calls me over and she's like, look, I have something for you. And to this day, I still have it. <laughs> she made me, I mean, I could probably not, <laughs> I, it looks big, but it's not, it's a children's size. <laughs> um, this was like, I would say I was probably in third grade, second grade when she made this. So she made it big enough so it would last on me a while, better in terms of quality of yarns, but, um, 
this type of yarn it took me a while to get used to so as a kid i would wear it occasionally but not often because the yarn material in red heart super saver in the 90s was or early 2000s is way different than what it is now of red heart super saver if you know what i mean you know if you've been using red heart super saver you know what i'm talking about they did fix it. it is softer now if you buy it so not to rip on it i use red heart super saver all the time even today it was when she gave me this though something just like i guess you could say i got bitten by the bug at that point i was just like wow i mean i would see she would make tablecloths but everything's different when it's personalized you know when it's for you and you just you realize what's in front of you and i was just like wow she made this sweater with the collar and oh my god it was just i didn't even know she did it i thought she just crocheted but this is obviously knit so this was so so cool fast forward to the future <laughs> fast forward to the future as i got older this was like in my teens now so 13 14 i went back to her i said can you teach me what you're doing And I remember, so me personally, being a man, actually asked her, there was some hesitation because traditionally men don't crochet. So she was worried in her own mind that if she was going to teach me to crochet, that that would turn me gay or make me less of a man if people found out or that people would make fun of me for it and I wouldn't be able to enjoy it and carry on the craft which is sad that that even happens but it was a true thing so it, it took her a while to finally be able and i didn't even know this. this was something my parents told me later on that she had a conversation with them that i did ask her to teach me how to crochet and stuff so i didn't even know this until i was an adult even to today it's so i mean it's easier now for men to be more free and do things that before was considered an exclusivity to a gender, which is dumb. <laughs> like colors don't belong to genders. Practices don't belong to genders. As long as you have two hands and a brain and a passion and a heart and something, anyone can do it and anyone should be allowed to do it. But anyways, after a while and after some convincing, she did, she sat me down one time. And just like Crystal, the first thing she taught me was how to unwind on how to frog something and ball and turn it into a ball she taught me how to respect the yarn that a yarn isn't something you just toss around or throw or you know crumble you can squish it but you can't mess up the integrity of the yarn so yeah I remember, so that was the first lesson was learning how to unwind and frog the second lesson was just how to do a chain is that she taught me how to chain over and over and over like until I got my tension right she because I was very I would always pull it my tension was always always so tight when I was young and so she would always that was the first thing she was like I can't teach you anything else until you learn how to chain with with the right tension or how to control your tension be there chain 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 frog turn it into a ball chain 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 and all she taught me was just double crochet that was it I remember she taught me double crochet and she said, as long as you know this, you could pretty much do anything. She's like, you don't have to learn too much. But what I want you to know is how to get the basics down. Because if you have the basics and a good foundation, everything else is just to, in her, in her words, to show off or to just glitz and glamour. She was like, you don't have to make it complicated. But as long as you know a good foundation, it can turn into anything. And I always liked that, that she taught me that or spoke to me in that way. And it wasn't stuff that, you know, I, I wouldn't go with her every day or anything like that. This would be like frequent chats that we would, because, you know, my cousins were there. So we'd either be watching TV, having fun, eating, or just being a kid, doing homework. But anyway, she taught me how to do a double crochet. And she guided me on how to do an infinity scarf in double crochet. <laughs> which is super simple once you get to know, or like, you know, once you become a beginner and stuff. And so that was pretty cool. That was my first experience with her. Um, and it was really cool because after that, 
things just, life just happened. I mean, I was a very studious person, so school was always first for me. This was just something that I could bond with my grandma when I would be around her, family parties or whatnot. So years later, when I was a young adult, she started to uh, get sick. And I asked her to just talk about stitches. Because I told her, I said, you know, I want you to, I want to be that family member that you pass this on to because uh, I, traditionally women would be taught this craft and at the time none of my female cousins in my age wanted to learn and I was the only one asking her questions about yarn and crochet so I told her let's this just be something between me and you let I want you to pass on to any any types of knowledge or tips that you think you could pass that you would pass on to someone that you would be teaching and you know that's where she taught me about half double crochets decreasing increasing uh triple crochets and a little bit of the basics of how to do a tablecloth with a very thin yarn that's really as far as it got when it came to my relationship with my grandma but <sighs> to this day it's just one of those big 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 regrets where I wish I could have made her something or you know I now that I think about how this talent um, was inside me the whole time I'm sorry I know there's nothing I can do to control or anything but uh, I just wish I was passionate about it earlier so I could have made her something. Whew. Sorry, let me gather myself because <laughs> then it's not fun for you either. <laughs> but uh, it's, I guess you can say, and, and you know, they say that artists who hurt or who are hurting, not in a life-threatening way, but that they tend to release that uh that emotion in their work and i guess that's why i enjoy what i do and enjoy the complicatedness of what i do and the whole uh i don't know i mean it, it, it's different you know when people you always think your work is always mediocre <laughs> and it's not until other people's reactions reinforce the idea that what you created was actually something pretty cool um but anyways i think that's why i push myself even today i every in every garment of mine there's always that i hope you're proud of me grandma factor in it or i don't know it was just one of because i would never because i can never you know go back in time I guess I try to make up for it in my current work, which is an interesting way of thinking about it now that I'm thinking about it, but that's actually, it feels comfortable. It feels right saying that. And I think it's a great motivator because it'll never go away. <laughs> but also I think it's beautiful because I understand it, I get it. And those who don't, are not in the hand-making art market, whether it's through fiber or woodwork or anything, anything that you make with your hands, just people just don't, will never understand unless you receive one or you make it for someone else. Just what it means to get something that someone spent hours doing, sometimes even bleeding from their hands. Or I mean, I've gotten blisters crocheting as well. So, you know, there is some blood, sweat, and tear that go into everything we make. It was long story short. My grandma <laughs> was the one who taught me how to crochet and just briefly mentioned stitches and stuff like that. It wasn't until I, after that, I, after she passed, there was a void in me and I continued on my own how to crochet. And I just started watching videos on YouTube. And to this day, I mean, I can read a pattern, but I don't need a pattern to create something. I can just sketch it out or see 
something, uh, even to today, what I do is I would Google image search normal clothes, something that has an idea or shape or look of what I'm going for. And I think to myself, how do I deconstruct what I'm looking at and turn it into yarn? And Crystal hit it on the head with her story about getting a, um, a doll dress and being told to deconstruct it and turn it into crochet. So that was kind of my own. I was, my grandma was gone. I didn't have anyone else to really talk to about this that I felt comfortable doing, uh, speaking with. And so I had to force myself to be a visual learner. And I was always a visual learner in lots of things. So it's not even just art or my fiber art. But yeah, that's, I mean, I can't write a pattern, but I can read one and I can definitely follow directions if I watch a video or even just see an image. I can kind of get an idea of how to create something like that. So it was a little weird at first that I couldn't crochet out in public, that I couldn't, I didn't feel comfortable going to a park or something and pulling out my yarn. Unlike now, now I would go, to, now I got, before the pandemic, I would go to festivals, funerals, even at funerals, I would crochet because it was my therapy. It was my way of, it's not that I was running away from the problems. It was a way to keep me focused on a task and have my thoughts focused as well. Because I do believe that if you just are thinking about stuff out in the open, you, there's an opportunity to get lost in the thoughts. So crochet is a really, instead of, you know, consider it like an Adderall, <laughs> an, an artistic Adderall. It was a way to focus my mind and my efforts in one thing that's producing something, but at the same time, it focuses my thoughts as well. I did sit down and just share because people do ask me and it is a very popular question to ask someone. Um, and I just wish, I even have this other one, my grandma. I didn't know she knitted. I really didn't know she knitted. I never paid attention to that. But this is another thing that she made me, was this bet a V-neck vest. And I'm gonna hold on to this. I can't wait for my kids one day to wear that stuff and tell them, or even make some. Obviously, I'm gonna make some for my own kids. Every now and then, I do go to where she's buried, and I crochet up a hat or something, and I wrap her, uh, I wrap it around her tombstone. <laughs> it doesn't... It doesn't last long because, I mean, I guess the caretaker, you're not allowed to leave that type of stuff there. I mean, and it is fiber, so I totally understand, but I do leave things for her. And the growth of this channel, I mean, this channel is a baby. It's only a little bit over a month old. So just imagine if years from now, hopefully things go great and continue to go great. And I just hope that she's, I just hope that she's proud. So yeah, if there's one thing I can teach you or pass on, final, final advice from me after this story, if there's one thing I can pass on to you, and Crystal said this very, very perfectly, you are limitless. And your talent is limitless as well. And I'm not ripping on pattern makers or anything. Go buy them. Uh, eventually, I'm going to start writing them too. But I see on a lot of comments too that people say, no, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. And I hope that my channel provides you a different way of learning and seeing the craft of yarn and crochet. Because it shouldn't be something that, uh, it shouldn't be scary. It should actually excite you. You make the rules and you, you can do it. You can. You just have to take some time, think about it, do your research, and go for it. Just go for it. Just go. And don't forget to share because we all like to see it and we all support each other. And the fiber community is a very beautiful community. But uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. If you cried, let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> Uh, it does help the channel when you uh, comment and like the videos. So don't forget to do that. Thank you so much. Be safe out there and expect a new video tomorrow. So tell me down below in the comments, how did you get started? I mean, you don't have to write all your whole story, but if you want, you can totally, I totally read. I try to read as many comments as I can, especially if they're trying to tell me a story. So uh, you can go ahead and leave me down in the comments down below. Where did you start? Who taught you? Were they mean? <laughs> My grandma was never mean to me. But she did, uh, she was stern because, you know, you have to respect the craft. You can't just let 
Don't let your yarn get dirty. Don't let your hook get dirty, things like that. And you can't have things around you. No food when you're crocheting. Although I do break that one every now and then. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below. How did you start? And did you cry <laughs> while listening to this? Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video. I want to take this time to thank my members. Thank you so much to my influencer group, Blanca Valdierrez, MMR Crochet, and Noemi Torres. For my inner circle, thank you so much, Araceli Pintado, Resilient Strands, and Karen Miller.